Picking the right panel is critical for your project, and things like location, building design, local codes and requirements, and look all factor in. Today we are taking a deep dive into the SMI one and a half inch fastener flange panel and learning about its application, installation, and when you should and shouldn't choose it for your roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this series, we look at a specific profile and discuss when you should and shouldn't use it, installation requirements, applicable engineering, and more. Our profile today is the SMI inch and a half fastener flange standing seam profile. It's a standing seam snap lock system. And in this case, it's installed with hidden fasteners on the male leg and the female leg snaps on to engage the panel. You'll hear this profile type referred to by a variety of industry names like fastener flange, nail strip, and nail flange. Sheffield recommends a maximum 14 and 3 quarter inch panel width and a minimum of 24 gauge steel to ensure the panel has enough strength and rigidity. This panel uses approximately 6 and 5 16 inches of material to be formed. Just like other snap lock panels, the inch and a half fastener flange is a hydrokinetic system which means it must shed water quickly to remain weather tight. To do that, it must be at a slope at or greater than a 312. An important note about this type of panel, it doesn't use clips. It uses fasteners installed directly into slots on the male leg, which pins the panel to the deck. This can be problematic because it greatly reduces the ability of the panel to expand and contract. Because of this, Sheffield Metals recommends that you only install at panel lengths of 25 feet or less. Also, as the panel expands and contracts, there's a possibility for the metal edges on the back side of the slots to wear a hole through the underlayment, so be aware of that. Always check your local building codes to make sure it meets the requirements of your area. Engineering is important because it uses actual data gathered about the exact panel profile and ensures that if you install your roof per those specifications, you're giving it the best chance possible to perform. For the SMI inch and a half fastener flange, there are currently no engineering tests available, but this panel does qualify for the standard SMI 40 year PVDF paint warranty and Galvalume warranties. Sheffield Metals is working on upgrading non-engineered profiles to have engineering, so stay tuned for updates on that. This panel is a good choice for residential projects with slopes at or above a 312. When you're looking for an economical system that has a seam height that's a little larger than the one inch fastener flange. It's quick and easy to install and doesn't use clips, so it's one of the cheapest hidden fastener metal roofing systems out there and simple to do if it's a DIY project. Don't use this panel over open framing at slopes below a 312. If you have engineering requirements or if you have to run panels longer than 25 feet, make sure you do your research and understand all the pros and cons to this panel before choosing it for your project. Next, let's look at how this goes down on a roof. Make sure to follow any installation guidelines or requirements available. I've already fabricated these panels with a one inch bend at the eave and a one inch box at the top, but if you wanna learn how to do it yourself, a couple links in the description down below. On the deck, the panel hooks onto the eave, is pinned on the box end with a couple fasteners, and uses fasteners installed into slots on the male leg. Make sure the fasteners are installed in the middle of the slot to allow the most expansion and contraction possible. Remember, you're relying on the head of the fastener to hold down the panel, so consider using a regular pancake head screw as opposed to an ultra low profile pancake head screw to get the most contact. And if you use a regular pancake head screw, you'll also need to use clip relief in your panel to make sure the fastener doesn't telegraph through the metal. This bead of sealant prevents siphoning of water at the end of the panel. The next panel hooks onto the eave and snaps in place. It gets pinned as well and the process repeats across the roof. This tab that I left on the female leg is optional and for aesthetics only. You definitely don't need it, but sometimes it's a nice touch. And make sure to leave a gap at the eave to allow for expansion contraction. The Sheffield Metals installation details has a great thermal movement chart that shows how much of a gap you should leave at the eave based on the panel metal, deck material, and panel length. Details for this profile are available at sheffieldmetals.com. If you have a new tech machinery roll forming machine and you run this profile, the one inch fastener flange uses the same male side rollers as the inch and a half fastener flange. If you wanna add the one inch fastener flange to your machine, you'll only need to buy the female side rollers. Both the one inch and inch and a half fastener flange profiles are popular in the residential market due to their lower cost and ease of installation. 
If you wanna learn more about this profile or other profiles that Sheffield Metals offers, I'll link their profile page in the description down below. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel, and as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I will catch you next time.